Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Inezalea and today I will be showing you how to create a postcard transition just like in the movie Red. Alright, so this is a really creative way of moving the scenes in a movie without really being torn apart with the scenes with a simple cut. It's so creative and it's so integrated. So this is what we're going to be seeing in today's video tutorial. We're going to be using Adobe After Effects in order to create this effect. So without further ado, let's open up Adobe After Effects and get started. And if you enjoy watching my videos, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you stay notified when I upload new videos. And before we start this video, I just quickly want to thank FeelWorld because they were so nice to offer me one of their monitors, which I was actually looking for to add in my camera arsenal. I record all these videos on my own, so it's hard to tell from a smaller display to see if it's in focus or not, or if I'm on a shoot. I just hate working with a small monitor. And the FeelWorld FW568 5.5 inch monitor is a monitor that you can connect to your camera and that will assist you with your focus and your exposure and so on. It has a very nice resolution and is super affordable so if you want to find out more I will put a link in the description below where you can find everything about this monitor. Alright so here we are in Adobe After Effects and as you can see I already imported my footage where I do my intro talk and then I have my second footage where I want to transition in which is just a flyover here in New York which is a stock footage and then I have some images that I will be using to design my postcard because you really want to make a uh, postcard kind of design uh, on your own because we have to take it apart and um, I unfortunately I can't share the footage files with you because I do not own them um, but yeah you can do that with whatever kind of image you have the technique is really simple and easy to follow so the first thing that I will do is drag in my footage right here in a new composition will mute my audio so you don't hear that and I will fit it to the composition. So if we press L twice on the keyboard you will see my speech. This is actually important because we really want to kind of make our speech and then leave some blank area after that so where we're not talking because this is going to be our transition time and like right here we want to start with our transition so what I will do is right click here on my composition and go to composition settings and I will increase the time to something like 34 and click OK. So that way if we extend the composition we have our first footage and we have enough space for our second footage transition so I will drag in my footage O2 right here and then what I want to do is drag this over here and go to the beginning of that layer then go one frame forward and go to edit split layer now we're going to take this and put it at the end here and then right click on the split it layer on that one frame that we just created go to time freeze the frame now we can extend that as much as we want but now we have a still image and after that still image is finished we will just continue in the video that we have right here so now what I want to do is design our postcard. So what I will do is go over here to my rectangle tool, make sure that no layer is selected right here and click on the rectangle tool and just make a rectangle. Something like that. And I will go to the align tab right here. If you don't see that, you can go to window align. I'm just going to center it on my composition. Then next I want to apply an effect called rough and edges to make the edges a little bit rougher and look more like a postcard. So go to the effects and presets and search rough and edges. Apply that to that layer. And as you can see already you will see some kind of edges right here. But if you increase the border you will see them more profoundly. You can also increase the complexity to something like 5 or 3 and play with the scale to your desired preferences. So I'm going to keep it like this for now and once you have that we want to pre-compose this layer so all the effects are pre-composed. So click on that layer, go to layer, pre-compose, postcard shape and move all the attributes in a new composition, click OK. Now we want to start of course this postcard right after my speech is done. So we'll zoom in a little bit on my timeline right here we want to show our postcard. 
So as you can see, we're seeing our video instead of the video in the postcard. And to do that is make sure that this layer is on top of our frozen frame right here. Then toggle the switches and you will see a track matte option change that to alpha matte. So now we are talking and our postcard pops up on the screen. So all that does is it's going to look on the layer above and just use that alpha layer to show our image. So we already are off with a great start. So we'll write some text here and go to the text tool and write New York. Maybe change this to a Times New Roman. And there we go. Make sure that this is on a new layer above it because otherwise uh, it's going to interfere with the track matte option right here. So just put that on top for now. And we want to reposition this, of course, so maybe put it like over here. And let's go for a cheesy kind of look. So we'll go for a red color. And then with a white stroke. Kind of a typical cheesy postcard. Okay. Once you have done that, we can now bring in our other images. And first of all, we just want to design our postcard and afterwards we're going to work on all the settings and details. So I have this photo here, which is from the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, I've actually never been in New York, so I have no idea uh, what I'm looking at actually. Well, I've seen a ton of movies. That's something, right? Okay, so I have this image and then I want to bring in another image. This is actually our Grinch frame, which if we bring it in, you will see something like that. We can rotate this 90 degrees, scale it up just a little bit, and we can change the blending mode of this one to multiply, and that's going to give that kind of grungy look on our postcard. But in order to only have that effect on our postcard, we actually have to duplicate that postcard uh, pre-composition that we created. So Control D or go to Edit, Duplicate, and put that above the grunge layer, and again, use on the grunge layer the alpha matte. Okay, so we have our postcard like that. Now all we want to do is to the grunge layer, press T on the keyboard to lower the opacity to something like 35. So we have a subtle kind of grunge on our postcard, something like that, which looks really, really cool. Okay, so we can continue with the other images and kind of fill the postcard and make it look kind of fun. So of course you can take as much time as you want on designing this. I'm just going to stop here and keep it as it is very simply like, like something like that. And there we go. So now what we want to do is add some stroke around these images and also we can align them by selecting these two for example. Uh, you can click on this layer and then on the taxi cab and then go to the align tool and align them to the left and do the same for these, align them to the right and yeah, play around with everything. So now we're going to select one of these and go to layer. We're going for layer styles and add a stroke effect here. Then right here you will see a layer styles added to the effects of your layer and we can open up the stroke effect, change this to a white color and also change this to position inside and maybe a size of 10 or seven. And once you're satisfied with the stroke, what you can do is just click on the layer styles and copy these with Ctrl C and then click on all the other images, Ctrl V to paste these effects. And now we have a postcard that looks something like this, which looks really cool. Okay, so next I want to kind of combine everything together. So all the images that are on the postcard, I'm going to select all of them and just give them a nice color, something like blue, so we can really tell them apart from the other layers. And I'm also going to shift them over to the beginning of our postcard, which you can see right here. So I'm going to shift them over like that. And then for the title, which is right here, I'm going to put that on top and also shift that over like so. Okay, so now the next thing that you want to do is for the postcard shape here, we want to toggle the switches and we want to make this a 3D layer. And actually what we also need, if we turn something in a 3D layer, we also need a camera. So we are going to right click, new, and add a camera. I'm going to use a 35 millimeter. 
and click OK. And I'm going to right click and create a new null object, which is going to be the control of our camera. If you don't know what that is actually, uh, there are plenty of tutorials using this technique. I'm not going over that in this tutorial, but if you just follow along, you will be able to follow anyway. So the null layer that we just created, we also have to turn it into a 3D layer. And then for the camera, we want to parent this to the null. So now the null is going to control the camera and it's just an easier way of doing that. So select these two layers, bring them on top and maybe give them another color like yellow. So we can see these are our controls for the 3D perspective that we're going to be creating. So we just created a 3D layer for our postcard shape. Now we have the footage behind it, which is the frozen frame. Now we have the other footage, which we can actually bring below. Now we have the grunge that is on top of our postcard, as you can see right here. And then we have again the postcard shape, which we're also going to turn 3D. Note that you don't turn the frozen frame nor the grunge effect as a 3D layer. We only turn the shape, which we're using as an alpha layer, in a 3D mode. Then select all the four images that we just created, also make these 3D. And then we're going to press P on the keyboard and bring them closer to the camera which is going to give that parallax effect. But now that we brought them closer, we have to rearrange them on our shot because they don't look anything like how they were. So just rearrange them to fit your postcard. And for the New York text, we're also going to turn this into a 3D layer. And also we're going to move this a little bit forward, but like that. And then also scale it down to something like 75 and just reposition this into your postcard. Okay, and once you've done that, now what we wanna do is go to the beginning where our postcard is visible. And we only want the image to show in this case, but we want the images to slide in over time. So what I will be doing is I'm going to select all of my images and the New York text, press P on the keyboard to reveal all the position um, info about these layers, move, forward to something like 10 seconds and create a keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch right here for all of these layers. And now we have a set keyframe for these positions. But if we go now to the beginning, we can start moving them around. So what I will do for the New York is I'm going for the Z here and just push it in Z space backwards behind the camera. So it kind of flies in afterwards. So now, boom, it will animate in to its original location right there. For the images, we're going to do just the same, but in this case, I'm just going to move this like to the left, this one also to the left, and these to the right. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in here. We just created these keyframes. Make sure that these are at the beginning of the layer. And then we want to move like three keyframes forward. So one, two, three. I'm doing that with the page down button on my keyboard. Then I'm going to select all of the other keyframes that we created in the beginning and move them to that third frame because we want the movement to happen really quickly. So now what we have is something like that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, if you think it's a little bit too fast, you can always select these keyframes and move them one frame further. And we also want to add some uh, kind of variation in there, some dynamic uh, movement, and we want to offset these animations. So I'm going to select the text is going to stay just as it is. And then for the images, I'm going to offset them something like that, and then select the last ones and just do something like this. So we have an offset and it's not going in the same timing. So now we have something like that. Okay, cool. And once you've done that, and actually what you can do is select all of these keyframes and right click on them, go to keyframe assistance and use an easy ease to smoothen out the animation. And then you get something more like that. But now the movement is kind of harsh and because of the movement, it should add some motion blur. So to do that, we're going to select all of these layers and click on the motion blur effect right here, but also enable the motion blur for the composition. And now we have motion blur in the animation, which is just going to look a lot more realistic. Okay, there we go. So once the postcard is in position, we leave it on for a few frames so we can actually notice the postcard. And then we want to go to the null here, which is controlling the camera, press P on the keyboard, create a keyframe for the position here and move like 20 
keyframes forward, we're going to be doing that with holding shift and pressing the page down key on the keyboard 20 frames. So click it twice because holding shift is going to move forward 10 frames. So in this case, we just want to move the camera forward closer just like that until we don't see the text and we don't see the images on the postcard. We only see the background layer just like this. And as you can see, we have the grunge layer, which is kind of, um, yeah, not working here. So what we want to do is go to the beginning here of the animation, go to the grunge layer and press T on the keyboard and create a keyframe for the opacity. Then move forward 10 frames or actually three frames just until we don't notice it any anymore. Like right here, we are still seeing it. So right here, we actually wanted to have it faded out. So we're going to change the opacity to zero and then move this keyframe a little bit more forward. And then we're going to have a nice transition of our grunge that is becoming reality. And now we still have that frozen frame right here. So right here at the beginning of like the, the zoom in, what we want to do is make sure that the frozen frame doesn't last as long. So we're going to trim that to where the animation kind of starts and then just put the following layer just next to it. So it kind of transitions into the animation. And now we will have that nice flyover transition effect. And by the way, we still have this kind of one error here when we transition into the original shot that's easily fixed by clicking on a postcard and duplicating that shot, putting it on top of the original footage and then just toggle the switches and also make this an alpha mat for the postcard shape. And there we go. And there we have it. So that looks really, really cool. And then all I've done lastly is right here at the transition. I made sure that I also added sound effects. So in the red movie series, they're using gunshots to make all the images come together in a postcard. And then I used a simple whoosh sound effect to zoom into the shot and then a nice beat from Levito Beats uh, to get that kind of action going a little bit. And all of the sound effects that I actually used were from Epidemic Sound. So right here, I'm looking through all of the uh, gun sound effects. They have a ton of sound effects on the website. And by the way, if you click the link in the description below, you will be able to use Epidemic Sound 30 days for free. So definitely go and check it out. They have so much music, sound effects and quality stuff to offer that it should be a crime not to sign up for them. So links are in the description below and that's it. All right, so that's all right. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did give this video a like, also be sure to subscribe to the channel for more and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. Apart from that, check out our web Apart from that, check out our website. We have a bunch of stuff to offer. And if you buy something from the website, it helps to support this channel as well. So that would be completely awesome. All the links are in the description below and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.